All right, hey guys, welcome again to Fire Alarms and Such, and today we're going to be talking about basic wiring of a Simplex 4010 fire alarm control panel, because I've had many requests for how to actually wire up one of these. So, I guess we are just going to literally dive right in. Starting up here at this top row going across, these are your NAC zones. So you have NAC 1, NAC 2, NAC 3, NAC 4, and those are just simple class B Class B wiring with an underline resistor on a Simplex 4010 it takes a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor at the end. You can see one of them there. I have the underlined resistor there because I need supervision, but I don't need supervision of the NACs because NAC 3 is just simply the LEDs for my key switches. So that's all your NACs. And then, you know, across on the other side, you can see my whole rat's nest of wiring for everything, but I won't get into that right now. Here, this one labeled N2, this is your N2 communication. So the way that that works is this is how the panel communicates to some of the other cards, like an enunciator. So these are the communication wires going to my enunciator. Have positive, negative, and your shield if you need to ground your shield. So this is what goes to my enunciator for communication. You can have, I think it was like six enunciators, but I'm not positive. You can have six enunciators on an N2 communication. The newer panels have a different communication style, but the Simplex 4010 uses N2 uh, braided wire communication. Going next here, this is your ID net channel. Now, you can have this set up as Class A or Class B. I have mine set up as Class B. That's why there's the two jumpers going across for supervision. Mine is just set up as Class B because it's a lot easier instead of running a wire, you know, to the end of line device. And the way that I set up mine, I T-tap instead of uh, daisy chaining going to each one. So I don't technically have a, quote, end of line device. I just have a whole bunch of devices coming off the same wire. So I set it up as Class B, which you can actually find in the manual. So here you have your external charger. Then you have your Class A inputs your positive and negative, then your class B inputs, your positive and negative, and then if you need to make it class B, and it's up as class A, you just take a positive and a negative, and you just jump A and B. And then these are what go out to all your ID net cards. So any of those little modules or anything, they all come off of this wire. It's not like a conventional panel where you need a whole bunch of wires, you know, going to each device or each zone. You just need all 11 of my devices come through this single pair of wires and then they go in the next room and they just get split up down terminal strip and it's all like that so I'm able to isolate zones but normally you wouldn't t-tap like that a whole bunch you just kind of daisy chain to the next pole but this isn't a professional installation this is for demonstration purposes so I need to be able to isolate zones quickly and efficiently then if we go down um, here you have your auxiliary power. This is stuff that will power things like your enunciator and your door holders, which is actually what I have mine doing. This red wire here is what goes to my door holder. And then this gray wire here is what goes to my enunciator. Then these two blocks of three terminals, these are your relays. You have two auxiliary relays. It goes normally open, common, and normally closed. As you can see, this one is being used this one's for my door holder. So the way I have my door holder wired up is I have positive coming from the auxiliary power. The negative is the negative is what is being cut through the relay. So you have your negative and then your negative coming in from your auxiliary power. And that's what gets cut between the relay. And over here is the same block of relays. And that's the same thing. Then here is your battery terminals and charger. You know, positive and negative. They go down to your two batteries. And then here, I'm going to show off the AC power real quick while I'm poking around so I don't kill myself. So, there we go. Door holder is going to close. So what happens is that relay just opened, which cut the power and allowed that door holder to release. And then down here, this is your AC input. Your ground is what goes to the ground here. Yours may look different than mine because mine was just kind of cut haphazardly. And then you have your hot and your neutral coming in. And those come up to your hot and neutral and that goes up to the transformer back behind the panel. 
and then the rest of it is just stuff that's already been pre-wired in like you don't have to mess with any of these wires here and then just some other kind of wire things there's this port here labeled service port this is where if you have a simplex uh, serial cable you can go on and program the panel through a computer and that's where you go in here at your service port never ever 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 there's these four silver discs here never ever touch those and never let them touch anything else metal those are thermal resistors on the panel to make sure it doesn't overheat and if it does it will shut down the panel so don't ever ever touch those like be so careful and then just a couple other things you have two potentiometers here this one is what adjusts the contrast of your screen i haven't fiddled with this one yet and i don't plan to you have your sounder and then these are just other um harness hookups so if you have other things like DAC cards uh, battery meters suppression release zones those go up on here and I'm trying to think is there anything else worth mentioning for basic wiring on a simplex 4010 no i think we kind of hit everything it's because it's an addressable panel, it's actually pretty simple to wire up. Like, you don't have to worry about all the zones and everything and supervision for each zone. Because it's addressable, it's self-supervised, and because it's listening for the pings from each point, you don't really have to worry about, like, underlying resistors and everything with your initiation zones, or points, I should say, because it's already being supervised with the addressable point. So, like, if when your points goes down, it'll say either weak or no answer, on the screen and it'll give you trouble. So really, the majority of your wiring all just comes through right here. Like all my points go through that wire. Let me turn my power back on to the panel real quick. If anyone's curious, it's just a surge strip that comes down so I can shut it off easily in the case of an emergency or any sort of malfeasant event. Your batteries simple battery hookup you have the two batteries jumped and then each one goes to the terminals up there um i can't really think of anything else of importance that you need to do i'll talk about a conventional panel later and then i'll actually do a video hopefully of the differences between addressable and conventional panel i had one and then my phone crashed and lost it which i was kind of sad about because it took me a while to record that one um, yeah, so, thank you guys for watching, and as always, I won't do this because that's a surprise for the next wall test. Um, we'll do it here, and as always, have a wonderful day.